We are going to talk about the Cambrian Explosion. Or was it? The Cambrian Explosion is known as an abrupt appearance of a great number of diverse organisms in sequences all over the world during the Cambrian period. But was it really as abrupt as previously thought? To illustrate just how varied and unique the organisms in the Cambrian were, let's have a look at some examples. Some of the most common fossil remains are in the form of neuralized body parts, such as sclerites, which will be embedded in the soft tissue of organisms, such as armor mollusks. This one is called Wewaxia, and there are others such as the Halkirids, a group of armor worms. In the Burgess shell, we find some of the first swimming organisms, such as trilobites and morella. And we can't forget the largest predator in the Cambrian communities, the Anomalocarids. So, what ignited this evolutionary burst? There are some causes for this that are actually interrelated as follows. Some scientists think that a steep rise in oxygen level might have crossed an ecological threshold, and this enabled the emergence of predators. This rise in carnivory will have caused an evolutionary arms race known as the Metazoan arms race, which initiated a competition between predators and prey to evolve new defense or predatory mechanisms. Traces from the early Cambrian also show animals starting to use different grazing techniques and exploiting the seafloor, which will contribute to the release of important nutrients and ecosystems for new organisms to colonize. The higher availability of oxygen will have also allowed animals to metabolize food in a much more efficient way than with anaerobic pathways, and use such energy for the formation of organs such as the visual system, a key evolutionary innovation in the Cambrian. Was it truly an explosion, or the slowly appearance of new taxa? This question is hard to answer, because answers come from observations of fossil patterns. Fossil patterns are acquired by classifying fossils found in sequences of rocks. And classifying such fossils into biological taxa thus creates a fossil pattern of evolution of these organisms. The problem is that fossil patterns are linked to the evolutionary processes that cause such patterns in the geological record and can be affected by many things such as the mode of preservation which creates a bias in the fossil records. For example, Mineralized body parts will preserve more readily than soft body parts, so is what we see in the fossil record an actual representation of what was really going on? At the same time, how can we understand evolutionary processes from fossil patterns? We can infer information about them by referring to modern organisms, but some processes are too slow to be observed. So what evolutionary processes operated during the explosion of the Cambrian organisms? This creates a circular paradox, because for understanding fossil patterns we must look at evolutionary processes, but to understand evolutionary processes we must look at the evidence for fossil patterns. These are some of the proposed models about what happened during the Cambrian. The first model is the slow burning fuse model. This model says that the fossil pattern suggests that the major diversification of animals started at the beginning of the Cambrian period. However, many scientists think that some primitive animals existed a long way before into the Precambrian. Evidence for this is controversial and it comes from genetic data from molecular clocks. Molecular clocks work on the principle that speed equals distance over time. If you can take genes from two different animals and you know their divergence time and how quickly genes evolve, then you can calculate how long it must have been since they were the same gene that is, when the ancestor containing the genes must have lived. When you do this calculation to work out when the first animals live, you get an origin time into the Precambrian. The second model is called the fast fuse model. This model places the origin of animals at the end of the Precambrian. When you look at the Diacaran fossils, they're actually difficult to match directly with modern animal groups. Why should good animal fossils not be preserved for so long? How did they evade the fossil record? especially when there's so many examples of excellent preservation of fossil algae and other soft body forms in the late Precambrian. This suggests that the major diversification of animals occurred in the Cambrian. In conclusion, this topic remains controversial and without a single true answer. Was it a slow or a rapid diversification of animals? If the latter, what was the cause? More evidence will be needed to solve this mystery if it's ever solved. <laughs>